Let's talk about the best vitamin to fight glaucoma. Now, before you take any actions that I'm about to recommend, make sure you check with your doctor. I'm not telling you to come off your medications. What I'm just trying to do is put this on your radar because this data has been really hard to find. So I want to share it with you because if you have glaucoma or know of someone, I think they need to know about alternatives. Glaucoma is a situation where you have this increased pressure inside your eyeball. And the danger of that is it can put pressure on the optic nerve and it could diminish your vision to the point where it could potentially cause blindness. In fact, glaucoma is the second cause of blindness uh, with certain individuals. There's 80 million people in the world that have glaucoma and 50% of them are unaware that they have it. And what I stumbled on with glaucoma is actually quite fascinating. And I had no idea that glaucoma could potentially be an autoimmune disease, which will explain the natural remedy I'm going to talk about. Now, if you typically research glaucoma with natural remedies or vitamins or nutrition or whatever, you're not going to find anything. In fact, you will see some papers on this that says there's no results, don't even try. Of course, that doesn't convince me because, first of all, who is going to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in research studies? So do we just hope and pray that someday someone will do some research to prove it? Or what about just trying something natural to see if it works for you? Especially when you hear what I'm going to talk about in relationship between glaucoma and vitamin D. In 2014, there was a study done in Korea with over 6,000 people that showed a very high correlation between low vitamin D and glaucoma. They found that people with glaucoma had three times more problems with the vitamin D receptor. And in this video, I'm going to summarize uh, a book that I just found by a German doctor. Dr. Harold Schell wrote this book, and it's quite fascinating because he uses high levels of vitamin D for all sorts of eye problems. And he's talking about all the great results that he's getting, and he describes some really uh, fascinating information related to vitamin D. And so that caught my attention. And I want to summarize the book in this video, and then I'm going to put a link down below of the actual book. Pretty much every part of the eye has a vitamin D receptor. And if this is truly an autoimmune disease, then vitamin D is involved. So in autoimmune diseases, you have antibodies against your own tissues. And so there's inflammation by your T cells. This prevents your body from just functioning normal. And vitamin E comes in there and it suppresses that reaction. But the problem is, if you're already deficient in vitamin D or you have resistance to vitamin D, and that is probably more the case, when you take normal amounts of vitamin D, you don't get the therapeutic benefit. And so then the immune system is now overreacting, out of balance, and the inflammation just stays there. Now, I just wanted to give you a side note. There's something called steroid-induced glaucoma, which means that when you take steroids, that can actually cause glaucoma as well. I think a great percentage of the autoimmune cases have a genetic problem with the vitamin D receptor or the conversion from the inactive to the active vitamin D or some type of absorption of vitamin D. And that term collectively is called vitamin D resistance. And this is why to overcome this resistance, we need to go up with the dosage of vitamin D. If we take a look at the normal amount of vitamin D, uh, which is pretty much outdated, there's certain references that will tell you that if you're below 20 nanograms per milliliter, you're deficient. But Dr. Harold Shell says the normal range should be a lot higher because the initial norms for vitamin D were established on certain healthy people that live in a certain latitude on the planet. And they really didn't look at all the other therapeutic benefits of vitamin D because if you're just trying to prevent bone loss or osteomalacia or rickets or something like that, maybe all it takes is a small amount. But Dr. Shell says that you need between 100 to 130 or even 150 nanograms per milliliter. An average doctor will look at that and freak out and say, wow, that's gonna be way too high. You're going to develop too much calcium in the blood. Well, you might want to just hold on and get all the information on this topic because there is some fascinating data from Dr. Coimbre from Brazil 
who treats autoimmune diseases and gets great results using high levels of vitamin D. And here's what he recommends to start out with, a thousand IUs of vitamin D per kilogram of body weight. Now I'm about 84 kilograms of weight. So I would need 84,000 IUs of vitamin D3 every single day. Because of that amount, you're gonna get a lot of absorption of calcium. Well, one thing you need to realize is when you test this vitamin D in the blood, you're not testing the active form of vitamin D. You're testing the inactive form that has to be converted through the various pathways. And if you have vitamin D resistance, despite taking large amounts, it might not connect to the receptors. So this is kind of a protocol that allows you to increase your vitamin D to the point where you can overcome the resistance and actually connect into that receptor to create a therapeutic benefit to your immune system. So the big question is, how do we know that it's connecting to the vitamin D receptor? What you can do is you can check your parathyroid hormone because when you increase vitamin D, okay, and it connects with the receptor, your parathyroid hormone will go down. Then you know it's creating an effect on the receptors for vitamin D. So what happens is you start with this 1,000 uh, IUs per kilogram for a few months. So you keep tweaking the dose until you either achieve between 100 and 150 nanograms per milliliter, or the parathyroid hormone is in the low normal range, and then you give it some time to work. And to minimize any potential calcium buildup in the arteries, you don't take a calcium supplement, number one. You cut down on some of the calcium foods. You drink two and a half liters of fluid a day so you can actually prevent a kidney stone. And you take 100 micrograms of vitamin K2 for every 10,000 I use of vitamin D3. And I will put that down in the description as well. You also want to take magnesium, about 600 milligrams every single day. Magnesium helps to prevent this calcium buildup as well. But let's say you don't have this condition, but your parents have it or your grandparents have it and you want to prevent it. Well, just start taking more vitamin D as a preventative measure for a cascade of body problems that involve a potential autoimmune disease or glaucoma. Anyway, I wanted to do an update video on glaucoma and give you this data to put this on your radar in case you want some alternatives other than the typical treatment. If you have not seen my video on vitamin D toxicity, that would be a really good one to watch. I'll put that up right here. Check it out.